home of Mary Mel and Randall. And there is a museum hidden here. And it is showing artifacts from the Holy Land, from Noah's Ark, the, um, the Ark of the Covenant, and Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, Ron Wyatt is on YouTube talking about this, but here are all of his photographs, and, 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 and they're going to tell us about it. How did he, and why did he suddenly go to Turkey? He saw this article in Life magazine where it said Noah's Ark, boat-like form seen near Ararat. That was in 1960. And they took these pictures because they were looking for missile bases, the military was, during the Cold War. And they said, this is not a natural object. So, a group of archaeologists and researchers went out there in 1960 and they blew holes in it with dynamite, but they came away with the conclusion that there was nothing there of any archaeological interest. But he believed they might be wrong because, like I was telling you earlier, Vicki, he knew that Moses had written the book of Genesis and the book of Genesis said, gave us the measurements of the ark. 300 royal Egyptian cubits. And the article said it was close to 500, about 500 feet. So he wanted to check it out. And when he finally measured it, it was 515 feet, exactly 300 royal Egyptian cubits. That attracted his attention. And he was an anesthesiologist who spent his hard-earned uh, personal money to go over there with his sons mm -hmm. and start poking around. And a lot of people thought Noah's Ark was on Mount Ararat, Ararat mm -hmm. but Ron had uh, a theory that was different. When Ron first went there, the Ark, it was even with the ground. It, you know, the sides were pushed up a bit, but it looked like this. And Ron came home and got some of his friends to pray for an earthquake out there because he said, this is so big and how am I going to be able to even tell what it is? So, excuse me, they prayed for it. Here's before the earthquake, here's after. It dropped the soil around the sides and what Ron saw was he believed these were rib timbers which led him to conclude that Noah probably cannibalized the ship for wood for a number of years. What is this that he found right there? Okay. When Ron first went out there, before he ever saw the ark, he found this village with all of these, looked like tombstones in them, and as he got close to them, he realized that they had a hole at the top of them, and that they were all pretty much the same size. They were all um, about 10 foot tall. They were different shapes, but they had a hole. And the hole was scooped out in the middle, and he immediately thought these were drogue stones. Noah's Ark was a fleet, free-floating object. It did not need an anchor stone, but by using drogue stones on it, they would hold the nose into the waves and the ones on the side would keep it from doing this. So he found those first and they are in a line many miles away from the ark. In the Bible it says that, that the Noah's ark landed on the mountains, plural, in the of mountains. Ararat. Yeah. In the mountains, plural, of not Ararat. on Mount Ararat. Mm -hmm. And so we're 15 miles away from Mount Ararat on the mountains of Ararat. Okay, thank you for clearing mm -hmm. that up because I, you know, the Bible, whatever the Bible this says. This is 8-4 is yeah. where we find that. Yeah. Meanwhile, what was his second thing he discovered? Okay, uh, after he went to Noah's Ark and discovered that there wasn't much he could do, he came back home and the next year, that, at that time, yeah. he and the boys packed up and they flew to Israel and they uh, drove all the way down to the end of Israel to the tip of the Gulf of Aqaba and hired a pilot to fly them down the Gulf of Aqaba to see if he could find where the crossing of the Red Sea took place. This is Canaan, right here, you know, uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. This is 
uh, in the Bible, this is referred to as the wilderness of the Red Sea because it's between the two fingers of the Red Sea. The Red Sea is massive. It comes down like this. And so Ron flew into Jerusalem way up here, got a car, drove down here, rented a, a, a pilot and a plane, and he flew them all the way down this coast. And what he found was Nueva, Egypt. And this right here, that's 10 miles long. That is a beach easily able to handle a million people at least and their flocks and herds. And so that is where he found chariot parts. Oh, he found, yeah. he found Roman, I mean, he found Egyptian, Egyptian yeah. chariot parts. Right. In the water? In the water. Yeah. That were, see, why isn't anyone looking for this stuff? Well, we can't, you can't take it out. This area right here is a protected coral area, and you cannot bring anything out of the water. And so, um, th this was a gold wheel that he found in 88, but all of the others that they found, the only thing that's really left is the shape of a wheel because where the uh, coral attaches to it's anything that's organic, it eats it up but forms a shell around it. So it's just like a fossil. We recognize a fossil by the shape. And we recognize... The shape of a, a Egyptian chariot, chariot wheel. Well, right in the middle, it actually goes down. It, it's about 2,500 feet deep here. Wow. On either end, it drops down to over 5,000 feet, just an immediate drop. So didn't God mm -hmm. tell Moses where to walk? Like, t was it tapping a rock or something? Well, he told him to stand there and hold his rod up. And when he did that, the waters parted. And what was this? I remember. This was, it was interesting when he first came here and went to the south end of the beach. That is south, this is north. He found this column lying in the water. And he told the Israeli police or um, maybe it was army about the column and they immediately moved it across the road out of the way and preserved it. And what he later found was one on the opposite shore in Saudi Arabia. This one had, because it laid in the water, all the inscriptions were gone. But the one on the other side had the inscriptions. And when they saw that it was in Hebrew, the, it, the Saudis removed it. But he, he believes that King Solomon erected those in honor of the crossing of the oh, sea of dry land. Right. Yeah. So he believes King Solomon erected these as this is the spot. This is the spot. Where yes. God parted the Red Sea. That's what it said on the Saudi side. Mm -hmm. well, that's what it said. The, 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 writing, the Hebrew writing on the other pillar. When Ron discovers this stuff, did he tell their, their governments, you've got precious things here that should he be did. preserved? Yeah. He became friends with a man in Egypt. He became friends with Nasif Muhammad Hassan. And this was before Egypt had uh, really organized into what they have today. Just like Israel, they had, a, uh, they had a Department of Antiquities, but it wasn't quite as like it is now. So Ron was able to make friends with this man who was the head of antiquities in Cairo. And Ron talked to him, and he actually recovered a hub uh, it, it was something he found in the water that was like this that had the spokes coming out and he took it to Dr. Hassan who said yes this is an 18th dynasty chariot hub but we don't know where it is now because Dr. Hassan has passed away long long ago. After he discovered Mount Sinai which isn't that where the burning bush was and where yes. Moses got the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. from God and the Jews were dancing around the golden calf and everything. So he found a spot where a million Israelis could have been oh, yeah. camped. Easily. And he, so he found Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Did, didn't he find where the, the mountain was burned? Didn't you say yes. it was blackened? Mm -hmm. Explain that part. This is Mount Sinai according to Ron Wyatt. When Ron saw this mountain, he was like, why is it all black on the top? He noticed that right away because the Bible says Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. 
The area at Mount Sinai is, when you're talking about a million people, at least, because they said 600,000 men. Right. And so they got, they got moms, they got wives, wives children. and children. And so what happened here was a massive, massive city actually had to happen. And this area in here was a lake. And we will put some pictures in there showing that it was uh, an excavated lake, it's obvious. Saudi Arabia is a country that has no lakes and has no rivers. Isn't it's, it desert? It's, it's Rocks? pretty much a wilderness. So how would you get water to a million people? Right. What God did, it talk, the Bible talks about the brook that descended from the mount. And it came from up there, came down the mountain, and came into here, and they dug out this massive lake right in, in here, very large lake. And they built wells around the edges. And there's an overflow down here. There's a, an, a, what, do you, what would spillway. you call that? A spillway. Mm -hmm. And water went out, and there was a place for the animals to, because they, they put their feet lake in the water. Past you know. the spillway that was okay. about 10 it, feet deep, and the, the real lake was 20 to 30 feet deep. What's your conclusion of all of this? Do, do you, do, why did God let Ron find all this? Was it because the Bible says, "Seeking you shall find"? Was uh, tell us, tell us your your feelings about this whole thing. He believed that it was for this time, because God is going to do everything that He can to offer us salvation. He is not going to let one soul lose their eternal life because they didn't have the opportunity. And that's what Ron believed. And I believe that too. 